Hey guys, we haven't updated you in a while on what we've been working on, so we want to bring you uh, up to date, give you all the latest things we have cooking, and uh, Danny will take it away and let us know. Yeah, so between, what is it, October? Between October. now and the end of the year, we have a new coach coming on, we have a new program launching, we're gonna release, hopefully release, a training camp date for 2022. That kind of depends on like the CrossFit season dates and when that becomes available. And then also, uh, Seth's gonna be running the Maui Marathon. Not what just me. Oh yeah, and Andy, and who else? Is that uh, it? That's, that's <laughs> Some me, people from our gym. Me and Andrew Hurley, the only two that have committed to this. So You can find me doing the 5K. If other people wanna you know, travel to Maui in April, I think it is. Is it April? I think it's April. Okay, I think. there you go. And commit to a marathon with us. It'll be our first marathon. Happy to have people come run it with us. Yeah. Um, besides those kinds of things, again, we didn't really give you much details there. Um, still kind of a work in progress, but we'll be keeping you updated with that. Um, other changes, I think the biggest change is probably what we're doing to the warm-ups. So, yeah. why don't you talk about October? Uh, yeah, so in October we have uh, what are called weakness warm-ups. It's basically just a chance uh, in that warm-up period of time during the 90 to hit a longer row or go for a longer run or hit a big set of burpees or practice some gymnastics that otherwise you're always trying to do under fatigue in a workout and maybe you're not pacing it right or whatever it is, but either way you're gonna get about 10 minutes to work on a warm-up two to three times a week uh, for your weaknesses throughout October. But then they change again in November and hopefully for good. Yeah, so we kind of made the decision for to come up with a more um, like everyday warm up. I think like most athletes have like their warm up that they want to do every single day. So we were trying to create something like that that might be more useful like across the board for everybody. Um, the main decision for like changing the warmups that way is because like I think as we get into the open and competition season and everything else, like I think it's nice for like an athlete or a competitor to just know what their warm up is gonna be and know how to get started before getting into the movement specific. So essentially how it's gonna work is we created what we're calling the jump ship dynamic. It's gonna be like a dynamic warm up every day before getting into the movement specific for usually what becomes the strength. Anything to add with that? Yeah, you just move for a couple minutes beforehand, bike row, run, whatever, just to get loose. And then like she said, the dynamic thing is something that she's kind of put together in almost like drills and sort of, sort of thing. Something yeah, it's like know. the knee pull, quad pull, yeah. like a standard moving dynamic warm up that... But it only takes a couple minutes and it's something you can literally do every day and it'll help with every single one of your workouts. So it gives you a go-to, so to speak. Right. And then from there, there's a short... Uh, warm up that is very specific to, like you said, the strength uh, or lift for that day. And we'll have three or four of those that will rotate as those lifts come up. Uh, so you'll see different versions of them, but they will repeat every month to six weeks or something like that. And the movement specific ones, I think, are just going to be, they're going to be better and more effective. There's like a little more mobility type stuff, a little bit more activation than like kind of the general warm ups we were doing beforehand. So I think it's going to be a really like cool improvement and like, just give everybody like a better like this is what I'm supposed to do when it's time to warm up yeah. thing. Yeah. Anything else on the warm ups? No. So yeah, weakness warm ups through the rest of the month and then November you'll start seeing those new and we're putting out videos and everything so you'll be able to if you have any questions we'll be pretty straightforward. Yeah. Cool. Um qualifiers. Yeah, so uh, a lot of questions about qualifiers, right? A lot of losers coming up, fittest games, and a number of other events that just require you to do these qualifiers. A lot of them are taking it really far. They want you to do four, five, ten workouts before you get to the actual event. It can take upwards of a week. So people are trying to figure out, A, which events they're going to do, and if they want to do an event, they don't know if they'll qualify. So if they go through it and they don't qualify, do they go do another qualifier, then another one? And what that does, it ends up stacking up and just kind of derailing your training progress. So a um, couple tips for taking on qualifiers. One, choose the events you want to do ahead of time. I think if you have a particular area you're trying to stay in and travel within or uh, a particular event you do every year, just choose that event ahead of time. Go all in on that qualifier and just whatever happens, happens. You may or may not get to compete, but um, you know, Don't do all the qualifiers. Yeah, it, it uh, helps you <laughs> avoid just stacking up endless qualifiers and not training. Um, and then number two, like how do you take on them in, a, in conjunction with your actual training? What you want to do is basically if it's like a heavy short one, you would sub that in for a lift, right? If it's a longer, challenging, more Metcon-y type workout, you sub that in for your get fit that day. And if it's more of like a sprint, 
gymnastics or something like that, you would put that in your quality timer finisher. Just sub something in and out and try to keep it within that 90 minute window instead of doing your training and then stacking on an extra two yeah. workouts you know, a day for a whole week. That could just set you back for a while with, with the amount of volume you could do and the amount of beating up to your body. I think also to remember like qualifiers aren't typically like good training. Like it's putting like a lot of stress and you know, you might do something that you normally wouldn't do just to put up a better score, you know, mm. whether it's moving badly or something like that. So just, there's no sense, like don't follow the 90 and be like, oh, I'm gonna do the qualifier too. Like that's not gonna help. They're typically short and high intensity, right? right? Which is like the most damaging right. for your body. So it's a test, not a training piece. Just keep that in mind when you guys are trying to navigate the, the qualifier season. I think that's enough said on that. Cool, and then also coming up, oh wait, when are we plugging in Shipwrecked? Ship, yeah, Ship Direct is coming up end of November. When did we do it last time? Uh, March? Mid-February. February. So you guys remember Ship Direct, we had done that in February, so that's coming back again in this November. What, November? Yep. And then, it's already been six months, I don't know how it's happened so fast, but the 100 points test is going to come back around probably in like the beginning of January. Yeah, it's going to, yeah, basically it's going to kick off the new year and then following 100 points test we'll do a little bit of biasing towards the open, those movements we expect to see, those styles of workouts. But the retest of 100 points test, it will not change. Maybe in the future we kind of tweak the, the test a bit, but it will not change at all this time coming up. It's more of a chance for you now that you know the scoring, you know the, the flow, you know how difficult it can be to really max it out and see what you can do as far as, um, I guess you can game it a little bit yeah, this time. Yeah, you definitely can. We didn't let you last time, so we should see a lot of improvement on that, which should be good, but yeah. yeah. That's kind of everything for now. Do you want to talk any details about the first things that you uh, no. give a little sneak peek on? New coach, new program, nothing like that, huh? You'll have to wait. Those are big announcements, yeah. actually. So. Yeah, and then like I said, training camp will be sometime next year. Hopefully, probably like June again. It kind of depends on like semifinals and whatever else. And I don't COVID. think. Yeah, and COVID. I don't think we're gonna be probably. We'll probably go to like a semifinal this year, and then the games. I like Probably. checked like what Wadapalooza looked like and it takes like 20 hours to get there from here. So we're gonna have to probably write that one off for this year. It's not a ton of downsides about living in Hawaii, but getting to events is definitely Impossible. one of them. Six hour time change too. Yeah. So yeah, we'll probably plan to be at a semifinal and then at the games, but- That's the plan. Yeah, more info. Check out the Maui Marathon if you wanna come out, run with Seth. Come run with me. <laughs> <laughs>